Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today's the day we're gonna do fractions. Oh, Charlie, he's really excited. He says he can hardly wait, so here's the day. Let's see if he's ready to go. Charlie, what are you doing over there? Wake up, we're doing fractions today. Get out a piece of paper and a pencil and get ready to go. All right, Charlie, so here we go. Right here, we're gonna put a number line up. Now, we were doing addition and subtraction on a number line, and today we're gonna to work with adding and subtracting fractions on a number line, of course. So, here we go. There's a number line there. Let's bring a number line right below it, Charlie. Pay attention. Now, here's zero, right? Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one and we're gonna divide it by two, okay? Don't get scared. Here we go. If we take one and basically divide it by two, break it up into two pieces, we have one divided by two, and there's our fraction. Now, we normally say that fraction is one half, which means one divided by two, right? Now, the one on top is a numerator, and then we have the fraction bar, and the two on the bottom is called the denominator. Okay. Now, pay attention to denominators, because when you're adding and subtracting fractions, the denominators have to be the same, and we'll talk more about that very soon. Okay, here's one half. Now, let me ask you something, Charlie. If that's one half, and over here we have another half, right? How many halves does it take to make up a one? Two of them, two of them, of course. Now, let's show this on a number line. Here we go, Charlie. One half, there we go, that's one half. And if we add another half to this, right? What's one half plus another half, Charlie? Two halves, two halves, which is the same as one. Of course, because two divided by two is one. So one half plus another half is two halves. It's like saying if you have one apple and somebody gives you another apple, how many apples do you have, Charlie? Two apples. Two apples, that's right. One apple plus another apple is two apples. One half plus another half is two halves. That's it. Okay, Charlie, so let's continue on. Let's add another half. So how many halves do we have now? Three halves. Three halves, that's right. Now, as a mixed number notation, which some of you I know have heard of, here we go, we have one and another half. That's the same as three halves. We'll talk about mixed numbers a little bit in this lecture because this is an introduction. We'll talk later on in the semester more in detail about mixed numbers. Okay, here we go, Charlie. We have three halves, which is the same as one and one half. If we add another half, how many halves do we have, Charlie? Four halves. Four halves, there you go. And four halves is the same as what, Charlie? Two. Two, because four divided by two is two. That's right. All right, let's continue on. Let's add another half. How many halves do we have now? Five halves. Five halves, very good. As a mixed number, it's what? Two and a half. Two and another half. There you go. Now, let's add one more half. And how many halves do we have, Charlie? Six halves. Six halves, that's right. And six halves is the same as three. Very nice. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the mixed number. Here we have three halves, Charlie. Remember, that's one half plus another half plus another half is three halves. One half plus one half plus one half is three halves. It's like one apple plus another apple plus another apple is three apples, except we have halves. All right, Charlie. Now, in the mixed number notation, it's one and one half, right? One and one half is the same as three halves. Now, how do you change a mixed number to the improper fraction, three halves, is said to be an improper fraction because it's a fraction that represents a number bigger than one, okay? All right, Charlie, now, what are you supposed to do to change a mixed number to the improper fraction, Charlie? Put a fraction bar with a two on the bottom. Okay, we bring a fraction bar and we put a denominator of two because we're dealing with halves, right? All right, now what are you supposed to do? Two times one. Two times one. Now what is two times one, Charlie? Two. Two. Now, why do you do that? Most people are just said, hey, just multiply this and add that. That's what we're gonna talk about. What you're actually doing here is when you take two times one, it's two. Well, that two times one is telling you that you have two halves that make up a one. See, two halves make up the one. So when you do two times one, it's telling you two halves make up a one. And then what are you supposed to do, Charlie? Then you're supposed to add another one, right? Because what you have here is you have two halves plus the other half, right? So two times one is two plus the one up there, the one half, 
which gives you how many halves, Charlie? Three halves. Three halves. So there's your introduction to changing a mixed number to an improper fraction. We'll talk more about that later in the semester. All right, let's go back to our fractions, though. Okay, here we go, Charlie. There's our number lines. This time, we're going to take a one, and we're, we're going to break it up into three pieces. It means we're going to take one and divide it by three. And so here we have one divided by three, which we say as one-third. Okay, Charlie. Now, how many thirds, Charlie, does it take to make up a one? Three of them. Three of them, of course. So let's do our addition on the number line with fractions. So here we go. One-third. One-third, Charlie, plus another third is how many thirds? Two-thirds. Two-thirds, of course. It's like one apple plus another apple is two apples, except we're dealing with thirds. So one-third plus another third is two-thirds. Let's add another third, Charlie. What do we get? Three-thirds. Three-thirds. Very nice. And three-thirds is the same as one. One. Very nice there, Charlie. Let's continue on. Add another third. How many thirds do we have? Four thirds. Four thirds, that's right, which is one and one third. Here you can see it right there. If we add another third, that is how many thirds, Charlie? Five thirds. Five thirds, which is the same as one and two thirds in the mixed number notation. Now, add another third. How many thirds do we have, Charlie? Six thirds. Six thirds, that's right, which is the same as two, because six divided by three is two. There you go. All right, Charlie, here we go. Add another third. What do we have? Seven thirds. Seven thirds, which is the same as two and one third. One third, very nice. If we add another third, how many thirds are there? Eight thirds. Eight thirds, that's right, and that's two and two thirds. And finally, another third gives us nine thirds. Nine thirds, which is the same as three. So if you have all thirds, just add them up. All right, so let's do some problems. Here we have two thirds plus Three thirds, Charlie. Now don't get scared. It's like saying, hey, what's two plus three, Charlie? Five. Five. That's right. If you have two apples and somebody gives you three more apples, how many apples do you have, Charlie? Five apples. Five apples. That's right. So, Charlie, what is two thirds plus three more thirds? Five thirds. Five thirds. That's right. Now, if we show this on a number line, here we go. Two thirds plus three more thirds is how many thirds, Charlie? Five thirds. Five thirds, there it is. So as long as your denominators are the same, it's basic arithmetic. Just two thirds plus three thirds is five thirds. Now, how do you show this if you're gonna write down your work? Well, since we're dealing with thirds, we write a fraction bar, right? Bring our three down in our denominator because we're dealing with thirds. And all you have to do is add the numerators. It's just two plus three. And Charlie, what's two plus three? Five. five. But it's five what? Thirds. Five thirds, and that's it. There's your answer. So you see, as long as the denominators are the same, it's very easy. Very soon, we'll get to the problems where the denominators are not the same, where you have to find the common denominator, or preferably the lowest common denominator. That's coming up soon. But let's do one more problem here, Charlie. Here we have 8 thirds subtract 4 thirds. Now don't get scared. It's like if you have 8 apples and somebody takes 4 of your apples away, Charlie, how many apples do you have? Four apples. Four apples. So eight thirds take away four thirds is what, Charlie? Four thirds. Four thirds. It's that easy. So let's go here. We'll take eight thirds. Now subtract means we're going to move to the left, but we're going to subtract four thirds. And what do we end up at, Charlie? Four thirds. Four thirds, of course. And so to show our work, hey, we draw our fraction bar. We have thirds. And we take our numerators, eight subtract four. What's eight subtract four, Charlie? Four. Four, but it's four thirds. And there you go. That's part one of our introduction to fractions. So we'll come back for part two very soon. So take a break, relax, and we'll come back and do more fractions. Woohoo!